Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. In breaking news, over a dozen people, including Congressman Luis Gutierrez and civil rights leader Ben Jealous, were arrested at the White House today demanding the Trump administration protect DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, and TPS, Temporary Protected Status Program. This comes on the heels of news that the administration's deportation numbers are actually lagging the Obama administration's, even while immigration arrests are dramatically have increased, as well as news that Trump is considering pardoning the infamous Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Well, now joining us to discuss all of this from Washington is Erica Andiola. Erica was formerly the government relations director for the Dream Action Coalition, served as the National Latino Outreach Press Secretary for the Sanders campaign, now the political director of Our Revolution. Thank you so much for joining us, Erica. And you just got back from this protest in front of the White House. We know a number of progressive leaders were arrested. Uh, talk about why uh, people were in the streets in, in the Capitol today. And uh, worth mentioning, people also protesting Trump in New York right now, um, also demanding um, uh, uh, the defense of immigrants in this country. Yeah, um, so, you know, there's there was a, um, there has been and there is a threat to uh, take away DACA and TPS. Uh, DACA, you know, as you might know, is uh, the deferred action program that has given a lot of people like myself uh, and, and other folks who came in as children the ability to work in the U.S. and to be protected from deportation. And DPS, you know, it's one of those programs that was able to um, help people stay in the country that have come from, you know, countries like Central America or um, other, like Haiti and others that have, you know, had um, some sort of natural disaster. And so those two programs have protected um, more than a million people at this point. And unfortunately, you know, there's, there's a threat from um, the Trump administration and also from the attorney general from Texas to take away bro both programs. And so, you know, today, um, today's protest at the White House um, and, you know, where Luis Gutierrez and Vangelis and a couple of other uh, leaders got arrested was to, you know, send that message to Trump that he needs to keep his hands off, hands off of DACA, right? Um, it's just very ironic that today he's, you know, defending or almost defending what happened in, in Virginia um, and, you know, trying to sort of uh, move away from the real conversation, which is him attacking people of color, him attacking people like, you know, dreamers and immigrants and people with TPS. And so, you know, this is a reminder for Trump that, you know, his actions speak a lot more than words at this point. And as the events in Charlottesville unfolded and as on Monday, Trump uh, condemned the racism and bigotry of the attacker, at the same time, it was reported that Trump is considering pardoning the infamous sheriff Joe Arpaio of Mar Maricopa County. In July, Arpaio was found guilty of criminal contempt for ignoring a court order to stop racially profiling immigrants. He'll be sentenced in October and could face a maximum of six months in prison. Arpaio was known for his dehumanizing, some would call racist treatment of undocumented immigrants, early and vocal supporter of Trump and of the birtherism movement and helped, along with Donald Trump, propel that into the mainstream. Um, talk about, give us your response to this news about a possible pardon for Joe Arpaio. Arpaio is literally the definition of white supremacy. And, you know, to me, seeing that and, you know, the con again, the contradiction between what he has been the same day, it was actually a couple of hours before this report came out that he was planning or or at least considering uh, partnering Arpaio, a couple hours before he had, he was condemning uh, white supremacy on a press conference. And so to me, you know, I'm gonna say this again, it's, th this action speak a lot more than words. And, you know, I'm not the only one saying that Arpaio is, is racist. I'm not the only one saying that he was going after people just because of their color of their skin. The court has been saying that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's very uh, unfortunate that, um, you know, this president can come out and press conferences and, 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 and say this, right, that they, he's condemning these kinds of actions in Virginia, yet, yet he's, you know, literally talking about pardoning someone who has not only arrested and deported, um, you know, not himself, but turning people into ICE uh, for so many years, but also having so many people in jail just because, you know, they happen to be brown or, 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 or people of color. 
Um, so it's, it's unfortunate, and um, you know, I'm hoping that he doesn't do that. And if he does, then America's going to see what he really means and who really he really sides with. Um, yeah. And the the evidence is just mounting now of his defense of white supremacy. So uh, it should not shock anybody if he if he does pardon Arpaio, as you said, uh, who is basically convicted of, of racist treatment of immigrants, of racial profiling. Yes. Um, but for those still in doubt, maybe if he does this, this will help change their mind. I, I wanted to get your also your response to to the latest numbers that uh, deportations are actually down so far um, under Trump. And uh, a reason for this, you know, arrests are up, but there's a logjam in immigration courts. There's p too many people being arrested that they all can't get deported, uh, I guess, is what, what's happening. And Trump has said he wants to hire hundreds of new immigration judges and uh, help get this flow uh, to resume. Um, what's your response to this? Yeah, I mean, he wants to strengthen the machine. You know, he wants not only to hire more judges, he wants to hire more ICE agents. Um, you know, he thinks there's not enough to have not only um, so many ICE agents right now, he wants to add more. And without understanding that this agency has been rogue, um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, there's so many, there has been so many more arrests, because ICE has literally been out there lying to our community, going into houses, uh, you know, raiding even schools, right? And so, um, at this point, what concerns me the most is that he is trying to use taxpayer money to open up more jails, to open up more prisons, uh, more detention centers, and at the same time to get more judges to, um, you know, to deport people. And to me, that's that's not a, not only is that not a good use of of, of uh, you know of, of our of our taxes, but also it's it's inhumane. You can't just you know put families like mine. You can't just put families. Uh, who are in this country trying to work, trying, you know, many, many of them have been here for years. Some of them have come, you know, uh, just a couple of years ago from Central America or other countries escaping violence, and all they find is literally um, detention and, and imprisonment. And so, you know, this is not what this country should be about. This country should be, you know, a country that can open up its arms to refugees and immigrants. Um, and that's definitely not where Trump is going. And. You know, I'm going to say for a third time, that's exactly, those are the types of actions uh, that really show what he wants to do um, and where he's coming from, the type of, of advice he's getting from Bannon and other people in his administration. And finally, uh, uh, following up on a point you made, you know, Trump is really seizing upon this machine that was expanded in the previous administrations, including under the Obama administration. If this deportation machine is to be dismantled, what is it going to take? Uh, well, it's. I think honestly, it's gonna take for Trump to be out of office. He needs to. He needs to leave. You know, I think um, there's already some efforts to to get him out of out of the off out of the White House, and you know, we we need to continue to push for that. Um, it's it's really scary to think that we have three or three and a half more years of this, um, and I don't think it's gonna get easier. Um, I think a lot of us have to really show a lot more courage. We have to figure out a way to continue to resist. Um, even though we have been resistant for years, even under Obama, um, but you know it's it's gonna take it's gonna take some time for us to get organized. But that's you know that's that's what it's gonna take. We gotta come together. Um, some of us have been marching. Some of us have been demonstrating. You know we've been. Uh, I just came back from one of those demonst demonstrations. Um, it's gonna take that, but it's also gonna take um, organizing in our own communities, uh, building power, and at the end of the day, putting people in power that are actually gonna be siding with our communities. Uh, not white supremacists, not you know people that are trying to go after the most vulnerable, like Trump. Uh, but this is definitely a short-term, uh, you know, resistance struggle um, that we have to face, and you know we have to continue to build power for the long term, for sure. All right, Erica Andiola, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us at the Real News Network.